It's the worst thing that can happen to you as a Worship Keys player. You get to church for a rehearsal or sound check, you connect all of your gear, everything's set up, you go to play that first chord and crickets. You can't hear anything. Today we're going to talk about what to do when main stage isn't working. Hey everyone, I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where our focus is making software like Main Stage 3 fun and easy to use for worship musicians like you. If you're playing worship keys in Main Stage, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because we put out new worship keys and Main Stage tutorials every week. Today we're talking about a super important topic, what to do when Main Stage breaks. This is the worst case scenario for us as software-based keys players because we want to make sure that our rig is rock solid for live performance. So what are the very first things that you can check when something isn't working? Maybe you've just set up for rehearsal or it's Sunday morning, you're getting ready to do sound check and things are not working. Well, we're going to cover the order that you should approach diagnosing the problem so that you can fix it as quickly as possible. So let's dive right in. The play that you need to start is with your hardware connections. This is the number one area where we find folks run into problems, especially when the rigs are portable, they're setting up and tearing down for every rehearsal, for every service at church. So the first thing you need to do when something isn't working is make sure that all of your hardware is connected properly. Double check that all of your USB cables are plugged in. If you're not sure, or if you really wanna be thorough, just unplug everything, plug it back in really quickly, make sure your audio interface is connected properly. If if all of your cables are connected, then you know that the problem has got to be inside of the software or maybe a setting on the keyboard. Once you know that your physical connections are in order, there's a really important second step that filters the way that you're going to troubleshoot from that point on. And this is figuring out if you have a MIDI problem or an audio problem. You know that you don't have a MIDI problem if you see the on-screen keys responding when you play keys on your keyboard or if you see notes up here in the MIDI activity monitor at the top of the screen while you're in edit mode or in layout mode. If you don't see the on-screen keys moving, but you see data up here, then that means that you just need to go and assign your hardware in layout mode. Maybe the MIDI channel on your keyboard got accidentally changed or you forgot to assign your hardware when you set up. If you see MIDI data here and you see the keys on the on-screen keyboard mirroring what you play, then you don't have a MIDI problem. You have an audio problem. It's really important that you figure this out because they're two different paths of troubleshooting. If you've got a MIDI problem, then you need to look in layout mode, check settings on your keyboard to make sure that it's sending MIDI data, and you go down that whole path of making sure that everything is set up correctly on the MIDI side. If you know you have an audio problem, if the MIDI is getting through and controlling the keyboard, but you're not hearing any output, then you can start to look into audio problems. So you can go into main stage preferences and make sure that you have your audio interface designated as your audio output. If you do, then you can make sure that main stage's master mute is not turned on. You can go over here on the right side of your channel strips and make sure that your output is turned up and that it's not muted. You can make sure that the master fader is turned up. You can check if you have a fader inside of your workspace that it's turned up as well. All of these things can be the cause of you seeing MIDI activity, but not hearing anything. It's also possible that you might have a channel strip in one of your patches that is soloed and it's turned down. So then you're not gonna hear anything at all because all of the other instruments are being muted by that one soloed channel strip. So you would just look through your channel strips to find that one channel strip with that yellow S. And then as soon as you turn that off, then you're gonna have normal audio again. So these are some of the things that you can check on the audio front if you know that you have an audio problem. If you've chased down all of those trails and you're still not hearing things, then it's probably time to start talking with your audio engineer at front of house. Make sure that the cables are connected to your audio interface or to the headphone jack correctly. Make sure that you're not muted at the board. If everything looks to be in order and you're still not hearing audio, even though you think you should be, here's what you need to do. Switch your audio preferences, audio output to the built-in output and just see if audio comes out of the speakers on your Mac. If it does, then you might have a problem with your audio interface or at the soundboard. All right, so let's say that you have MIDI, you have some audio, but the audio does not sound right. 
Maybe it's too quiet, maybe it sounds garbled or glitchy. If it's too quiet, just make sure that the output channel strip is turned up, make sure that the master is turned up. You don't want things like running super quietly. And you can talk to your audio engineer as well and make sure they have your channels at the board adequately gained up. Uh, but if you're hearing audio and it just doesn't sound great, uh, make sure that if your sound system is in mono, that you have the mono button in Sunday Keys turned on, or if you're using another main stage concert that you've added uh, an instance of the gain plugin set to mono to your output channel strip. Otherwise, you're only hearing half of your signal at front of house. It's always gonna sound weak and one dimensional because literally half of the signal is missing. If you're running a stereo signal to the soundboard, but it still sounds weak or thin, make sure that those two sends are actually panned hard left and hard right at the soundboard. Otherwise, you can run into phase cancellation problems that you might not anticipate at home, but they're gonna be very prevalent and obvious when you get to church. Now, if the audio sounds distorted or like it's clipping, you can check in main stage to make sure that you're not sending too much signal out. If you see red here on your output channel strip, then that's a good indication that you're just sending too much volume out of main stage. But if your gain staging looks good here, then there might be a chance that there's something going on at the soundboard that's causing that distortion. Maybe too much gain, maybe there's a really hard compressor or limiter on your tracks that's causing this sort of problem. Now lastly, if things just sound weird, if they sound funky and garbled, or if they're a half step flat, then this is likely a sample rate mismatch problem. You can quickly identify if that's the case by going to audio preferences and changing the sample rate to the next nearest sample rate. Most audio interfaces are gonna want 44.1 or 48 hertz, but there's not an immediately obvious way to tell which one is the, uh, the sample rate that your audio interface is actually using. But that mismatch can actually cause the audio to come out in a really weird sort of off pitch warbly sort of way. So if you ever notice anything like that happening, then there's a great chance that it's just an issue of the sample rates being slightly out of sync and causing that really weird garbled sound. If you have decent audio most of the time, but from time to time you're hearing cracks, uh, pops, or weird distortions in the audio, then it might be that main stage and your computer are actually just having a really hard time keeping up with what you're asking them to do. It could be a symptom of CPU overload. And if that's the case, the quickest way to test is to go into advanced settings under audio preferences, and then increase your IO buffer size dramatically. You can go all the way up to something like 512 or 1024. Now you're gonna have a bunch of delay or latency when you play, but if the audio sounds good, if it sounds clean when it comes out, then you know that CPU overload was what was causing that audio problem. From there, then you can incrementally decrease that buffer size one step at a time again, until it both feels good and you're not running into those audio dropouts or distortions. There's gotta be a middle ground for you where you're able to not push your system too hard and also have a minimal amount of delay so that it actually still feels playable. Did we miss anything? Leave a comment and let us know the first thing that you check when something's not working inside of MainStage. If you need help finding success inside of MainStage, then I'll link up some resources in the description of this video that will make your life easier. We've got a free video course called the MainStage Basics course that walks you through everything you need to know. And we'll also include a link to some free MainStage patches and our done for you Sunday Keys MainStage template. Thanks for watching the video.